Sports fans, be sure to read this fantastic article by Colby Giacobeno on Scott Brooks' lineup adjustments that goes perfectly with this breakdown. And don't forget, if you download our app, you can get all of our content in one place, from articles to videos to podcasts, and a fun community as well. You in? The Washington Wizards have very quietly become relevant in the Eastern Conference. After a 3-9 start gave way to a 7-13 start, new coach Scott Brooks turned the ship completely around. Over the last 27 games, the Wizards have won 20 of them. For some context, only the Warriors have played better in that same span, and one glance at the lineups tells you why. Through the first 20 games of the season, the starters played a whopping 20 minutes a game together. In comparison, only Minnesota starters played more minutes per game, and it's a steep drop-off after that. That said, they were doing very well, posting a healthy plus 8.7 net rating. But if you glance at the top of this list, you'll see when Kelly Oubre subs in for Markeith Morris, they become a murderous plus 53.9. However, Brooks hardly ever played this lineup as they struggled along the bottom of the Eastern Conference. But what a difference a lineup adjustment makes. This is how the lineups have looked since December 7th, and over the last 27 games, notice how the starters have upped their game considerably. But it's this second lineup with Oubre that has not only destroyed the opponent, they've gotten a lot more run, going from 3.2 minutes a game to 5.7. So let's look at this unit on offense to see what kind of shots they're generating. Right away, you'll see this is not the offense Brooks ran in OKC. It's got tons more movement and cleverness, and they love this set, where they pin down for the ball screener, then back screen the ball screener's man. This opens up all sorts of things, like deep post position for Gortat, a place he can be very effective. And it's this set that also opens up room for a wall because the health defender gets screened and anything you do at this point is simply too late. They also let John Wall run the show with ball screens all around the basket. And this is where Otto Porter has found his groove on skip passes like this for in rhythm threes or when his man gets sucked into Wall's gravity only to stray too far off a guy who's shooting lights out from behind the arc this year. It's truly remarkable to see how confident Otto Porter has become from all over the floor, like this Horns flare action where he goes off one foot and floats it in over to White Howard. And they run the same action to find Porter cutting back door where he gets the and one. And this same set encourages multiple cutters, knowing that John Wall is a very unselfish player and will find you if you're open. I can't say enough about the emergence of Otto Porter on offense. He's just a different player now who catches and shoots and knocks down shots with guys in his face consistently. While Oubre and Wall aren't really shooters, they do find enough space with Porter and Beal out there, and they have their Beal pin down series to let him do his thing, where he's very creative on the step back mid-range. Or floppy sets, where they'll get Beal sprinting across the court around the Gortat screen, doing his dance with the ball till he finds the opening to get space on a short shot. Brooks is also smart to put Porter and Beal on one side to suck the defense a few steps wider so they can't help easily on the high pick and roll where Gortat can clean up as a roll man. And there's a curious thing I notice in the stats. With the starters, Wall shoots a terrible 24% from three point land, but with Oubre in, he's shooting 40%. Defensively, this group is a lockdown bunch, and one of the adjustments is that Oubre guards the point guard most of the time and Beal is on the small forward. With four long and athletic players and a rim protector like Gortat, they're perfect for creating havoc and contesting shots. They can also switch everything and not miss a beat, and watch how their effort from all five guys translates into pressure on the ball and limiting good shots by the offense. There's a heightened level of activity from this bunch, jumping out into driving lanes, helping and recovering, everybody moving together on a string, and eventually this wears an offense down until there's no time on the shot clock and they have to burp up a bad shot. Beal is an underrated on-ball defender, Porter is aggressive, and even if they get beat by a pass under the basket, John Wall can still make utterly spectacular plays to get that ball back. 
And once he comes back down the court, he is going to find the open man. And Bradley Beal knows exactly what to do with that much space along the baseline. As we mentioned earlier, Porter has emerged as one of the top three-point shooters in the league. And he loves that right wing. And the difference this year is the rhythm. He doesn't hop into all of his shots, but he has found that YOLO attitude and just lets it fly with one or even two guys flying at him trying to close out. No matter, that ball has been scorching the net. So there you have it sports fans, the Wizards have become an exciting ball club again, showing the signs of promise we had seen two seasons ago when they made it to the second round. They're older now and much wiser, with lots of experience and a coach who has proven he can get his team deep into the playoffs. Will they compete with Toronto and Boston? They're only two games behind the Celtics for second in the Eastern Conference, and if they can get home court advantage against all but the Cavs, they will certainly be my dark horse to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. While they've got a long road ahead of them, it's certainly in a much better direction than last year. Bring it out. Now he goes back the other way and lays it in! Long of the sleep.